There are a few technologies we're going to show you here in the factory, but since we're in the building, um, why don't I give you a quick tour? Follow me. So we're actually walking towards the front of the building at the moment. We're going to take a looping left-hand turn here and uh, off to our right will be packaging and shipping. And we'll make a quick pause here. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a, we're going to tour the factory backwards in essence. And what you see down here, this is the Sentatec line uh, where the flagship N300 offering is built, as well as its bigger brother, the N500 machine. Let's keep moving on. So off to our right, N300 5x12 machine with a push-off system that was just packed this morning will be shipped out tomorrow. So technology is in a manufacturing facility, not just what you build, but how you build it logistically. How do you track and how do you manage your quality through the factory? David, if you take a quick uh, skew up there to the digital dashboard, each of our build stations has a digital queue, noting what's going well, what's going great, and where we need assistance from either engineering, logistics, or, or production supervisory. Continuing our walk forward, uh, next machine finished, queued for packing. That machine is an N500 5x12 Concept 2, so a through feed router. And then we'll just kind of rattle off a little bit what's going on. N300 5x10 standard machine. N500 5x10 with an outfeed automation solution. So let's pause here if you, if you don't mind. What you see here is we're often looking in the market with, with Home Ag Machinery North America or our US-based manufacturing initiative to, to in essence serve our customers by bringing that style safety net into market segments that we previously were ineffective or were not, uh, not able to participate in and all. This machine is one of those. Uh, we're able to, to leverage our U.S.-based manufacturing facility and enter a market space for which we call abrasive, abrasive materials. That could be, you know, 100% Corian operation. It could be glass mat G10. It could be uh, some different variations of aluminum that are dry cut uh, and or some thermal plastics, right? So follow me around here. Talk a little bit about abrasive materials protection and what machines are required to be built like to handle uh, materials or substrates that are create an abrasive and invasive chip. So here, um, again, we say not mind-blowing technology, but important to understand if you're looking to, uh, to, per, to, to sell machines and or, or participate in the ma and manufacturing of abrasive materials. So pressurized oil management. So when we say invasive and abrasive materials, those uh, small particulates enter the bearings of the machine, right? They enter the shoes. The, the particle is so small that we can't prevent it from entering. So we pressurize them and we flush them out to increase the longevity and effectiveness of the linear motion package on the machine. So we talk about how do we leverage uh, our US-based manufacturing footprint uh, to bring that style safety net to uh, another group of customers in the market and abrasive materials protection on our N500 series machine is one of those solutions. So as we continue forward, uh, pre-assembly, right? So we talk about not just what we build, but how we build it. The station off to my right is our pre-assembly station for the gantry components for N300 and N N500. So what's the importance of a gantry? Well, it's the, it's the backbone of the machine. It carries your router spindle, it carries your drill spindle, and it does all of the work. So one of our manufacturing strategies here is to pre-build that component, pre-wire it, so that when we it's time to bring it to the production line and add it to the machine, it slides on, we wire it in, and it's ready to go. It's pre-tested, and the time that we spend at that particular tack station uh, is, is very, very small. So pre-assembly isn't just right something as important as the gantry, pre-assembly of reference pins, pre-assembly of fence actuators, as we see here with, with can or Kanban, right? So oftentimes when we tour the factory, we're asked uh, which which manufacturing strategy is pre prevalent in your in your 
in your manufacturing, right? Is it lean manufacturing? Is it Six Sigma? Is it Lean Six? Is it the, the TPS, the Toyota Group Production System? And for us, the answer is often yes, right? Um, manufacturing here in the U.S. with the type of product that we manufacture, we pull components from each of those, right, that best suit the product that we build and the, the type of worker that, that we build it with. So uh, we're doing a little bit of all of that. You'll see some stuff here in our signs, gantry assembly, supermarket assembly, which comes from the TPS. And we're constantly looking to increase and evolve our manufacturing strategy to become that 1% better today than we were yesterday. If you continue to follow me through, since we are going backwards in this tour, uh, we'll take a pause here at our first uh, three stations. This is where the frame enters the manufacturing, uh, the manufacturing line. So these first three sections are what we call moving assembly. Each of these frames will move up the line on those red casters there down on the ground uh, through their through each of their build stations. Once we get past these first three, we go into what we call box style assembly, where people and parts and pieces come to the box and we assemble the rest of the machine from that, from that position in the production line. So what are we seeing here? Uh, off to my right, that's a frame for an N500 five by 10 machine. The machine in the middle here, N300 five by 10, and the first machine coming into the production line over here is also an N500 5x10 machine. Good. Let's continue on with the tour. So now we're, we're coming up towards the back side of the factory. We're going to loop around. And if we had a bird's eye, if we had a drone, or if we were if we were riding up on our on our crane system, you would see that the pre-assembly forms the backbone of our manufacturing facility, right? It feeds the Centitech N300 and N500 line to the left. It feeds the T300 twin table line up towards the front right, and also here on the back side, uh, we have a whole drill and dowel uh, ABD slash uh, Centitech drill tech. Uh, construction area on the backside here. But before we make that turn, let's focus our attention to the to the the rearmost portion of the factory here. This is electrical back panel assembly. So we're building them up. They're engineered. We build them up soup to nuts here with our own people. We cross check. We cross reference. Uh, we enter. We build them into the electrical cabinet, and then that enters the line at the point where electrical and gantry come into the production line. So let's, let's take a pause from our tour. I wanna to take us into the backside of the factory here when we continue to talk about what's new, what's different, and why does it matter. I want to uh, show you another market segment that, that we're now able to bring that style safety net into um, by way of this US factory here. Follow me. Okay, so follow me back and I'll show you our, our newest technology. So what you're seeing here, warehouse shipping and receiving in the back half of the factory or the back quarter of the factory, I guess I would say. And what you see here is the next iteration of bringing that safety blanket of Styles and Home Egg into um, the North American CNC market. So uh, there's a, a board that's gaining popularity. I call it Euro board, typically seven foot wide, uh, nine foot or 10 foot in length. Um, typically kind of uh, founded around or based upon that deeply textured melamine uh, that's coming in from Europe, right? So again, I'm very open here with Home Egg Machinery North America. We have plenty of strengths, um, but there are some weaknesses also, right? And this seven foot platform had been a challenge for us to um, import from Europe, right? So what we were able to do is take the European design, the German design, put it through our R&D department here at Home Ag Machinery North America, Americanize that frame design. So, you know, moving from metric steel to inch so that it's, it's easier for us to build here. And what is behind me are the first two 
a seven foot by 10 foot N500. We'll call them Euro board nesting machines uh, that we'll build here later this month. So again, taking a market segment that is growing in popularity, it's growing in volume, and then parlaying that into a home egg product, uh, right? To, to make the effort to, to better serve our customers through US-based manufacturing. This is kind of a cool frame. I don't want to spend too much time on the technical here, um, but we laugh, right? It kind of feels like a soccer field or a football field. The, the, the working field is so vast um, that it does make it difficult to move vacuum from what is typically a center plenum on the machine and maintain pressure on the edges. Uh, so here we went to a dual plenum design. So vacuum pressure uh, through these channels down the machine, matrix table cassettes on top, secondary plenum distributes vacuum to the edges or the outer extremities of the matrix table, giving us a nice uh, platform to have similar pressure at the center of the table as it relates to vacuum as we do on the edges. And you guys know that are working with this deeply textured melamine material, the more volume that we can provide to the machine in terms of vacuum and the higher pressure that we can maintain throughout the, the nesting process, the better we fixture your parts. And of course, right, the better your finished product quality at the end of the day. Okay, so coming out of the N500 710 Euroboard uh, machine, let's now take our tour. And now we're actually going up line again. And let's spend a little bit of time at our drill tech horizontal bore and dowel insertion assembly area. So here we are in the drill tech construction area. So different from uh, the center tech line where we have three moving stations and then box assembly. Um, right? I'm always one to downplay this particular area, um, whether I'm right or wrong, but we're basically building machines to drill a hole and stuff around pegging them. Uh, but nonetheless, if you are building case goods with dial construction, if your horizontal bore and dial machine is, is, is not running Optimally, neither is your production line. So what we see here, uh, Drill Tech D200, 06028, which is a 2.8 meter machine, 10 foot working field, followed by a smaller machine behind it. Again, D200, uh, 12 or 1.2 meter machine, a uh, four foot working field. And then two more 1.2 meter machines behind it, right? So um, although these machines kind of don't have the same uh, excitement within the production line as the T300 or the Sentatec line does. Nonetheless, they are super important for, for our manufacturing strategy here in the United States. The other thing I want to do here is use <clears throat> our standard drill tech uh, construction here and kind of piggyback that technology into um, the D510 machine we have on the floor in the Grand Rapids West showroom. Okay, so bringing in a little bit closer into the drill tech construction, I think one of our most important benefits that we bring to the market is the commonality of the software or the, the ecosystem within everything that we do in the home ed group. So uh, David talked about bringing the woodwop ecosystem into the twin table, right? High volume nesting, high volume component market. We do the same on the backside of the production line with the N300 and the N500 running the WoodWop software. It's important to know that the drill tech series machines are no different. So what we're standing in front of here, this is a power touch control graphic interface, right? For what's happening on the machine table. And that same WoodWop file that we create and run on the T300 machine or the N300 or the N500 machine runs here as well, right? So. Not only are we, we looking to affect right, how, we met, how we build the machine here in the factory, right? pre-assembly and digital dashboards, and, and then right, the mechanical assembly and doing that as efficiently as possible. We're looking to bring the same to you with a common software platform. Right? So it's easier to cross-train your people between a home egg panel saw, a home egg Sentatec router, potentially a T300 router, um, and something as basic as a drill and dial machine. The more 
cross-trained our people are, the better we can react to the dynamic nature of manufacturing, right? Every day is a new challenge. And if three or four or five of our people are trained to run or do five or six or seven processes in the factory, when employee A calls in sick, employee B and C can step in and, and handle some of that work because they're familiar with the platform of the machine, right? We're bringing you uh, effectiveness, right? That you can't quantify when you make the investment in the machine because we really don't know what's gonna happen every day in your factory. So, all right, as we work our way up, back up towards the front of the facility and the front door, right? The end of the tour. I think it's important to stop on the backside here. So we're on that pre-assembly fishbone again on the backside of the gantry assembly that we saw earlier in the tour. So just a quick little review here, right? Gantry assembly, home egg drill block. This is an N500 level machine. So bend spindle and C axis. And really what I want you to see here in terms of pre-assembly is um, American factory, but very much has the feel of a European factory. Everything is clean, it's organized, and everything has its place, right? So you'll see here on a tool cart, um, 5S type, type strategies, everything has its place, everything goes back in its place so that the next time you need it, it's where it should be, right? Economy of scale of hand motion is very big uh, in terms of mechanical assembly and we prove it here every day. And then things like just simple stuff, pre-assembly carts. Um, Let's make sure what's on the cart is in the place that it's going, that it needs to be used later in the shift, right? So uh, simple organization, we live by it. Um, if you're not an organized person, you don't survive very long here. If you buy into the system, right? We have fun doing what we do every day. And the goal is to be 1% better today than we were yesterday.